Hey guys, Zarak here, and today we're doing another Twine tutorial, and we will be looking at dice rolls and stat systems today. Now it sounds more complicated than it is, I promise you it's not. Um, this took me maybe two or so hours to work out with the help of the uh, guys over at the Twine Discord. Um, so once again, go check those out, the link is down in the description below, as well as the Sugar Cube and Harlow guides. Uh, for anything you need in those two languages. Now, this is only going to be on Sugarcube today rather than on Harlow. And then the next episode, which will be on images and sounds and how to use them within Twine, will also only be on Sugarcube. The reason for this is that it's just easier uh, to do it on Sugarcube than Harlow. Harlow is great when you're just using variables and doing very basic stuff. Um, and making a great story out of it. I made the Rise of the Crowd here fully out of Harlow um, initially. But when you get to some more complex stuff, Sugarcube is the better uh, language for that. So if you've been using Harlow and you do want to try and do these things, I'd recommend you try and use Sugarcube. Uh, look back at the previous tutorials and relearn everything that was being done on Sugarcube. Look at the document and uh, go for it basically um, so like I said we're going to be looking at dice rolls and stat systems today um, so this is based on a Dungeons and Dragons type uh, character creation uh, so for anyone who hasn't played Dungeons and Dragons before basically you have six uh, characteristic stats uh, that your character will have you have constitution uh, which is to do with health uh, you have dexterity uh, you have intelligence, you have strength, you have wisdom, and you have charisma. They are the six main stats. You, you obviously have other stats in D&D, &D, but they're the, these are the ones you're looking at uh, for this video. Um, and these can come and play in interactive fiction. If you think about it, Dungeons and Dragons is, in a sense, interactive fiction. Uh, because, you know, instead of playing a game... Um, you know, uh, on your computer, the DM is the game in a sense. You're interacting with the DM and the DM's fantasy and the DM's story uh, and the DM's game. So, what we are doing is looking a bit complicated. <laughs> uh, I will admit that. Uh, it looks a little bit messy, but we'll walk it through. Some of this you might have already been able to work out from the previous episode, uh, from the previous episodes, should I say. Um, so, it's just putting it all into place. So what we want to do is we want to set six dice to be random between one and twenty. I use one and twenty in this just for ease, uh, ease, pardon me, ease of use. Um, you can go to one to eighteen and figure out how you want to do the modifiers and stuff. I didn't really fig um, mess around with the modifiers too much. I just went for one to twenty, um, and then what I would do if I was to apply this to an actual game is I would say you know if it's un uh, underneath or equal to 10 do this if it's uh, between 10 and 15 do this and if it's 15 to 19 do this and 20 do this um, so it's, it's just a simpler way but it's however you want to do it uh, so we want to set these dice rolls so dice 1, dice 2, dice 3, dice 4, dice 5, dice 6 variables and then we want to make it a random uh, between 1 and 20. Uh, this, I believe, is coming straight off uh, C Sharp. Uh, I've been doing a little bit of C Sharp training uh, recently, so I believe this random 1 to 20 uh, works the exact same as uh, C Sharp would. Uh, and then this one, you don't have to do this. Uh, this has been something that I was messing around with a little bit, um, is to making a combination uh, of dice rolls. I would probably recommend doing this, uh, but it does get a little bit weird. Uh, we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, so you basically want to make a new variable called dice rolls and you want it to have all of the dices in there. Um, now these speech marks, I'm going to give a warning here for this, it will be fine. Uh, but as I got told a lot in the Discord, doing this is actually kind of bad practice. You kind of want to not have these in speech marks. Um, I forget entirely the reason why, but it's something to do with the variable not updating right or something. Um, but because of the way we're using this variable, it is absolutely fine. So anyone that does know Twine, uh, don't shout at me in the comments. Uh, trust me, this is fine uh, with the way we're going to be using this variable. 
Um, so now we got the text that the player would see. So the game has stats system, the stats are blah blah blah. Uh, you have rolled, and then you use the dice rolls so you can show all the dices. And then what you want your strength to be. All right, we're starting off with strength, and basically this is very similar to uh, the inventory system in Sugar Cube. Uh, in the way you're linking things. So if the player decides to click on the number that dice one is, um, it will then take them to the constitution. Um, it will then set the strength to whatever the dice one variable is. It will then set the dice one variable to zero. We'll get into that in the next, uh, in a few seconds as to why. And then we want to delete dice one out of the dice rolls. This is why this speech marks thing isn't really too important. Because by the end of this stat system, this variable 1 won't ever be used again. And 2, there will only actually be one number left inside it. Um, but like I said, we don't actually use this one ever again outside of the stat system. Uh, once the stats are defined, it doesn't need to be used anymore. Uh, and then this is just copied and pasted. So again, if you click the second number in the list, which would have been dice 2, it will take it to constitution, it will set the strength to whatever number dice 2 is, it will set it to 0 and it will delete it. And it's the same for all 6 of them. So if we go to constitution, you can see it's basically the same thing. Uh, you have these dice remaining, obviously it will take off the one dice um, that was clicked before. And then what do you want your constitution to be? And this is where the 0 comes into play here. So if dice roll is greater than zero it will display this and then this is the exact same for everything if two is greater than zero it will display it if three is greater than zero it will display it if four is greater than zero it will display it if five is greater than zero it will display it basically the reason for it to be this way is so it will only show the numbers that will uh, that need to be shown um, I tried to do it a really weird finicky way the first time doing this and it became really really long winded uh, so this was actually a really good way of getting around it now there's probably different ways of getting around it uh, but this was a good way of getting around it so if it's above zero it will display if it's zero it won't display that's why we set that variable afterwards after it's being transferred into the stat system uh, into the variable for that stat itself that's why we then set it to zero uh, to allow this next passage to not display it basically um, I mean that is just repeated again and again and again exactly the same way if it's uh, greater than zero it will display you can click on it it will go to the next passage it will set the variable of the skill to whatever the dice roll is it will then set that dice roll back to zero to allow this um, loop to work and then it will delete this dice roll that is really the basics of this uh, system um, a lot of it is just copy and paste after you've got the initial work done of it now taken to note how this is written uh, because sugarcube is very um, precise on the way that you write it so for example if we take a look at this if command here so if dice one is greater than zero if i was to put a space here it wouldn't work it has to be right next to it as you can see every single time these uh, double uh, triangular brackets are next to the um, the end of the statement in every single one so make sure to do that uh, make sure to copy obviously all the brackets right uh, for this you need a run command um, don't ask why I don't really know uh, um, that was one of the things the discord helped me out with by going hey this is how you do it there you go um, and yeah that is literally uh, all there is to a stat system um, obviously also make sure to close off your links and your if statements um, so you just go through every passage it works the same I decided to you know to uh, test it out um, I would always get the um, stats to then display um, and then finally there you go now one thing that you um, I believe did I do it in the end hold on one two three four five six okay so I didn't do it um, 
which I thought I did, but obviously I didn't. Uh, this charisma one technically doesn't need to be uh, like this, uh, because obviously you will only have one number left. So what you can do, uh, it's something I would suggest you guys, um, you know, figure out how to do to make it a little bit uh, easier to the eye, is actually then s uh, see if you can set the last remaining die um, to be um, the uh, charisma. Um, theoretically, you don't even need all of these like links and stuff on this last one. Uh, you can just go like. You know, if it's not zero, uh, you can probably just cut this entire thing out. What you can probably do is just remove all of this. Right? Um, let's see if we can do this on the fly. Because uh, I thought I'd done this already and I hadn't. Um, so if dice one is greater than zero, uh, we can just set the charisma. Uh, we don't even need this really either. Um, we don't need the link or anything. Um, and we can, we can just do it like that. So... Uh, but the hardest part of doing this is uh, trying to make sure you haven't removed the wrong things. Uh, so if we just quickly, carefully remove the bits we don't need. Uh, I'm, I guarantee I'm going to get this wrong. Uh, just so you guys know. I 100% guarantee. I'm going to get this wrong. Um, da -da 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 -da. And then go to um, final. I believe that's how you. <laughs> Bear in mind, I've done these tutorials. I've already forgot how you deal with go tos. Uh, so I believe that's right. And theoretically, that means that you know, again, if it's not zero, then it will set the charisma to that, and then it will set it to zero. You don't even really need to set to zero. In all honesty, you can even just get rid of that line too. Um, and then we got the final. So let's test it out and see whether I've just completely broken it. Uh, that'll be fun. So here we go. The game has stat system, stats of blah, blah, blah. You've rolled a 14, 14, 20, 16, 9, and 14. What do you want strength to be? Now, I love my characters with a strong strength, so we're going to be going for 20 in that. Now, the one little bit of an issue that this uh, system has is that there's been gaps. Um, if you can figure out how to fix that, please let me know in the comments. That's nice, but it's only a little graphical um, issue. And to be fair, it's not that problematic. Uh, so again, you can see the 20 has been removed from the top here. And obviously it's removed from the option here and it shows that it's now in there. Constitution, again, are like very strong boys. They're gonna be in the fight all the time. They need a lot of health. Uh, so we're gonna have 16 health. And again, 16 is now removed. Um, so we want our dexterity, I mean we've got three 14s, uh, I like playing my boys in as best uh, statistics as possible and sacrifice either their charisma or their wisdom so they can either be a little bit dumb or a little bit less charismatic. Uh, so let's go for a brutey boy, uh, let's say he's not going to be charismatic at all. Uh, so we're going to have 14 in dexterity, we're going to have 14 in wisdom, uh, intelligence, we're going to have 14 in wisdom. And it did work. There we go. So you can see our strength is, const uh, is 20, our constitution is 16, dexterity is 14, intelligence is 14, wisdom is 14, and our charisma is 9. Uh, that is very much a basic way of doing a stat system. Uh, so I hope you guys did enjoy this. Uh, if you did, leave a like down below. Like I said earlier on in the episode, the next episode we're going to be looking at images and sounds. And I believe that might be the last episode of proper learning. Um, after that I'm going to do a bit of a longer episode of really dissecting the rise of the crowd here for you guys um, because while I've gone into little parts of it I haven't gone fully in detail of it um, and it might help you guys out a little bit a um, little bit more with your um, projects so I hope you guys did enjoy this video if you did leave a like down below subscribe if you would enjoy my content uh, go check out the other videos in this series and also check out my Inform 7 series that I did a few years back, uh, it's another interactive fiction program, a little bit more code based uh, than this, which is a bit more simpler. Um, so yeah, hope you guys enjoy and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out everybody.